Hey guys, John here. Today we are in the Arturia CS80 V4, and today's patch is a lead called Big, Bright, and Beautiful, and here we go. Alright, so there we go. We're going to recreate this in real time. Now, there's something just nice about the portamento, the glide to this kind of track here. It's just tasty. Okay, so this one is going to be kind of a little bit more involved because we have a lot of effects going. We're going to be using some PWM, that pulse width modulation that we all know and love. So uh, yeah, let's get into it here. So let's go to a fresh copy of the CS80 and let's go to a new preset. So first things first, on the main one here, let's go to our advanced and let's disable the effects for now. And also I'm going to disable the reverb that I have right here by just turning this off right here. So we basically have this. Right, so just... So just a dry patch, just some oscillators, filtering, and a little bit of filter modulation. So let's get into it. Okay, so we got our default preset here. Now the first things we need to look at are going to be the oscillator. So what are they going to be doing? So for this, we're using the square wave and the triangle wave, right? Because we're using a pulse, which mo pulse with the modulation with the square wave. So we can turn off the saw, and if we play something on this one, we won't hear anything, right? Because there's no uh, selected waveform. So let's go for the square wave and the triangle together. So first thing, let's set up the pulse width modulation. So here I have the LFO on free, so we can bring this up to free right here. And then the speed, I've just brought it a little bit, little bit faster is at 0.344, default is 0.309. So we just have to go slightly, just a little bit farther there. And then for the PWM slider, we're gonna go 6.2, 6.12. So we kind of get that pulsing sound. Okay, so let's move on over here. So we have a little bit of noise here to kind of give it a little bit of that grid here. So 2.72 noise. Is that 2.72 or 2.17? Ah, 72. Yeah, sometimes these numbers, man. Okay. Get a little bit of that noise. Makes it sound kind of nice here. And 58.5 for the high pass filter. 58.5. All right, so now we're moving on to the next filter, and this one is just a little bit at 2553 hertz. And then we're going to be using some resonance here. I'm about halfway at 0 0.408. And the numbers don't have to be exactly the same, right? They're just pretty much in the ballpark, just kind of the idea of the patch. But if you want to do the same, that's cool too. You can get the same result. Okay, so moving on from here, the attack level is going to be at 420, you know what I'm saying? 420. There we go. And then, so for our attack here, it's going to be 15, and then the decay, or <laughs> decay is 590. So 15, 590. 15, and then 590. And for this, we're leaving the release alone for the filter. And then moving on over here to the VC or the VCA level over here. The attack, we don't have to touch it two milliseconds, but the decay is going to be 875, which I believe is actually default. So let me see. Yep, that's default. Sustains all the way at the top, but we're giving it a little bit of a release at 131 milliseconds. So we should have something kind of like this right now. Okay, so that's basically all we have to do for the first oscillator. And if you watch the other videos this week, we can just do an easy, quick copy and paste here. So down in the center tone selector, we see these kind of Roman numerals and the one with the arrow pointing downwards. Let's go ahead and select that. So all the work that we did for the first channel for the first oscillator is now copied to the second one. So we still only hear the first one and that's because here on our mix, we're just listening to the first one. And over here, we kind of have a blend of the two, right? So we have 0.480. So something kind of like that. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, so next up, we're going to be changing the octaves on the first one here. So leave the second one alone at default, but the first one's going to be up one octave. So we're going to have to bring this slider down on our patch here. Okay, and I wonder if I change any of these here. They don't look too different. This is zero and that is zero as well. I don't think, yeah, so those are unchanged. Okay. So what are we listening for here? What, what can we notice the differences? So we hear a little bit of panning, right? A little moving left and right. And this one is actually not going to be on the mod wheel. I mean, we can do it if we want to, but this one's kind of going to be set up that way. So remember in the sub oscillator section here, we're going to be using the sine wave and we see our pan is kind of moved just a little bit downward at 0.3 and our speed is going to be at 344, which I think it might be default, right? Oh no, it wasn't. I actually changed this here. So it's 344 for the speed here. And then what do we say for our pan amount is going to be 0.3. So take a listen how this moves the sound around the stereo field. So we're getting closer here. So there's a couple other things here, and maybe I'll give you a second to try to figure out what the difference is here. If you can, if you guess the portamento, you are correct. That was one of them. So let's go ahead and add that here. So portamento is going to be 0 0.011 for this guy. Let's see if we can guess the other one. So maybe if you know the, if you can hear the difference, but you're not exactly sure what it is, basically what we're doing here is on this patch, if we look down here at the bottom, this is gonna be on the mono play mode here. So every time, every time I hit a key on this patch that we're making, we're basically firing off these envelopes. Well, that doesn't happen with this guy. So all we have to do is come down here to poly where it says eight and then we can go to mono. Or even we can go to Legato if you want to do something like that. Which I believe is the one I had on this one if I remember correctly. Yes, mono legato. Because the difference is here, if we hold down a key and press another one, We're not firing our envelopes every single time if we just were to go to, let's say, like eight back to eight, for example. It's a very individual note. So if we change this to the mono legato, makes it sound a little bit smoother. And plus, we have the portamento in there. So it makes it sound a little bit, uh, a little bit more leady, I guess, if that's even a word. Okay, so let's kind of compare these now. more volume here so let's see if we change the thing negative 8.54 negative 8.54 so we're losing some volume somewhere because uh, we're boosting here on the fader so let's go ahead and bring this one back one eight because i probably think i brought it up for the track to kind of make it sit a little bit nicer okay that's pretty uh pretty close here okay so now we need to get into some of our effects so <laughs> Let's go to the advanced and go to our effects here. So basically what we're doing here is tape, echo, chorus, and then delay. Kind of a, kind of a standard thing I like doing with this uh, synth here. So let's turn off the delay and then the chorus and then tape echo. So this is dry for, for right now. And then here's a tape echo. Because the mains are bypassed, good Lord. And something you notice on this one, this patch is pretty heavy on delays. So if the delays are getting a little bit in your way, you can always back them down here via these sliders. <laughs> because the intensities for a while, the f it's basically a lot of delays going on. And then this is going to get fed into another delay at the end. So it's kind of a big sound here. So let's go ahead and dial this in for the patch that we're working on. So down here in our effects, we have the tape echo by default, which is kind of nice here. So let's kind of compare these here. So our dry wet is going to be 27.6. So let's bring this up to 27. Point six. Okay, there we go. And our time sync is one over four, which I believe that's default. Yes, is here. 
Intensity, 0 0.350, 0 0.350, that's great, but we're gonna be on ping pong, so make sure to select that there. And the fine tuning, 0.126, I kind of like just changing that just a little bit, kind of gives it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, makes it wider, I suppose, in a weird way. It's not as exact, I feel. So we're set up here with our tape echo. Next, we're going to go into the chorus. Let's turn this on here. It just thickens things up a little bit. So the chorus for this guy here, and if we move this, let's see if we have changed any of our settings. So rate 0.990, that's the same. Depth 0.202 or 2.20. Delay five, I believe a lot of this is gonna be default. And we kind of just bring this up to 16.4 because out of the box it can be kind of a kind of a lot so 16.2 something like that or yeah or 16.4 I love this synthesizer. Okay, so next up we have our delay and let's go ahead and load this guy up. So we have delay and this one, the timing here is going to be one or one over two, so half bar. So let's go over here to sync this guy and then bring this up to the right, something like that. And then I don't believe we changed too much here. This one is not gonna be on ping pong as opposed to the other one. The fine, let's do that a little bit negative something, just a kind of small little change here, not, nothing too crazy. Our feedback's 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and see what we did to our stereo width, it should be the same. So now our dry wet is going to be 18.8, and yeah, drag them down just a little bit. But do you see what I mean, how much delay is in this patch here? But when you're playing something, you can really play this lead and maybe a bass or some drums beneath that, and it can carry up a lot of space and really fill things up. So you don't need too much in the mix if you're if you're using this type of patch here. So one of the last things, we're actually pretty close with these. It's kind of hard to tell which is which patch and which is which delay. But anyway, so the last thing here is putting our external reverbs. And like I said before in the other video here, I spent a little time with Valhalla Vintage Verb and I kind of wanted to dial in something that I think might sound a little bit more appropriate to the CS80. So go ahead and screen grab this if you'd like to and kind of dial in those settings for, uh, if you have this synthesizer. One of the main things, I really like dirty plate on synthesizers. It just, there's something really nice about it. And I believe they recommend that as well on their website if I remember correctly. But anyway, so we have this here and we're gonna be routing our new patch to this reverb here. So let's go ahead and click that and then let's turn on our reverb here. So we have something like this. And it already sounds huge. And then if we play our track back again, so basically this track is pretty bare bones, right? We have some drums and then we have a bass, which really is only playing two notes, the root and the fifth, and then just this lead line over it. So really three tracks, I guess, technically more depending on how you want to count tr drums, but anyway, some simple drums, a bass, and then this lead here, and it kind of fills up the space quite a bit. But yeah, so that's how to make that patch, the big, bright, beautiful. So if you want to get a copy of that and not have to dial everything in by yourself, there is a free link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.